against the Dolphins. Marino with time has his man inside the 20 and out of bounds close to the 10-yard lines is McDuffie. Now it's a good job of throwing and catching by Dan Marino and O.J. McDuffie, but really this offensive line, Richmond Webb is out. You know, they had to restructure it. Brent Smith didn't get to take one snap at left tackle the whole week, and what a job he is doing so far protecting Dan Marino. First down, Dolphins at the Denver 12. And the marker flies before the snap. Prior to the snap, full start, number 65, offense five-yard penalty remains first down that's the right guard kevin donnelly what did i say four or five let's 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 rephrase that we might get about eight of them maybe, in this game maybe you meant four or five in the first half yeah maybe in the first half but denver one of the reasons why teams have been throwing the ball on them so well this defense the pass rush early in the year they were getting to the quarterback the last six or seven games the pass rush has not been doing it. Marino has his man inside the 15-yard line. Pick up of about five, and that's McDuffie again. McDuffie with 1,050 yards receiving on the year and seven touchdowns. Well, Dan Marino getting to play from the sideline, just taking his time. I kind of like this approach. Meanwhile, defensive coordinator Greg Robinson. Well, John Cheerlink, we talked about that pass rush. He is the pass rush specialist for the Denver Broncos. Marino flips out of the backfield. Parmalee, Parmalee diving inside the five-yard line. Nine-yard pickup on the play. It'll be third and about two. Now, the thing that happens when you get good protection, that last play illustrated it, Dan Marino looks down the field, really good coverage. Nobody opened into last second because you got all this extra time. You dump the ball short, and the running back can pick up extra yardage. Significant drive for the Dolphins. This is the 10th play of this drive coming up. Dolphins go to a double tight end now, and it's Ed Perry and Hendrick Lusk. And now... Marino calls timeout and walks away from the play. That stops the clock with 10-14 to play here in the first half, and the Dolphins knocking on the door for the first time today. Hines element on each side of the ball. The no huddle, of course, is one of the surprises he's using on offense. Ed Perry, the tight end. Abdul-Jabbar, the only back behind Marino on third and two. Quick drop, throws to the corner. It is incomplete. Lamar Thomas, his intended receiver, it would have been enough for the first down. Boy, good job by Darian Gordon, number 21. Waits for Lamar Thomas to come across the formation. Look, he hustles all the way there. Because you're on the goal line, you have the advantage of looking for that short pass. He does it, gets his hand in there, and knocks it out. Olindo well, Mare on to attempt the field goal from 23 yards out has been in something of a slump. He has missed four of his last nine attempts. just inside the goalpost. So the Dolphins are on the board with 10.07 to play in the first half. And by the NASDAQ MX Market Group, the market of markets. Number 20, Greg Dumble, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan back at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Amari field goal has the Dolphins on the board, 14-3, to cap a 76-yard drive. Vaughn Hebron, who pulled a hamstring in practice and was down for it up until game time, takes the kick. Family marker down, and he is met and dropped just across the 20.
as we await the call. Tripping number 42 on the receiving team. To be a 10 yard penalty remains first down. That's Detron Smith. We'll take the opportunity to remind you coming up at halftime. We'll be saying you to our New York studio for the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Jim, Marcus, Brent, and Mike have first half highlights. Steelers coach Bill Cowher has analysis and a preview of the San Francisco Atlanta game. Coming up on the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. So the Broncos will start from their own 13. Let's see if it's a runner pass. John Elway must be a runner. It is indeed. Dan is big hole. And breaks free. 30, 35. Brought down across the 40 by Sam Madison. Well, we had a chance to talk to Terrell Davis and what he said. What's going to be the difference from the last game three weeks ago till today? He says, I'm rested. I got that week off. I didn't have to practice. And he says, I got fresh legs. I really struggled at the end of the year. And he says, the Miami Dolphin defense, they haven't seen the Terrell Davis, the runner, they're going to see today. And I think you can notice, even at home watching it, how much quicker and how fast he is getting to the hole. 91 yards already for Davis. Davis. To the 48. Maybe the 49. Well, the Miami Dolphin defense, I mean, there's a couple people that got to come up big. The corners, they're doing a pretty good job. Zach Thomas, number 54. Hey, they got to do something. They go away from him. They got to find a way to get in there, crowd the line of scrimmage, and make those tackles. Now watch Shannon Sharp, number 84. Good job. Does a good job on Derrick Rogers. Keeps him out of the play. Gives Terrell Davis another nice hole to run into. Terrell Davis now at 100 yards on the day. Now, that's not a good sign when you have success at all three spots. Second and two. LeBell. In momentarily for Davis, gets the first down. Now, you know, we talked about Greg, and, you know, we've seen Terrell Davis do such a good job. Tony Jones, the left tackle, hobbling off. Jones, the 11-year veteran out of Western Carolina. That would be huge for the Denver Broncos. Let's watch and see if we can find out what happened. He's the left tackle. Here he is. There he comes. Oh, and the runner falls into his knee. And the Dolphins use a timeout. 7.55 to play first half. And he'd be worked on on the side. So now Harry Swain moves to left tackle and Matt Lepsis moves in at right tackle. Elway. Smith, the intended receiver, and Sam Madison was there with it. Now, I'm telling you, anytime the Denver Broncos want to do this, they can throw it down the field today, and they're guaranteed of this. The corners for the Dolphins, one-on-one, -on -one. and look at Sam Madison, puts that hand out, always feeling where the receiver is, and I'll say this about Sam Madison, number 29, Jimmy Johnson, who's been in the NFL and had a a lot of good defensive backs. He says, this is the best corner I have ever coached. Terrell Davis, flanked to the top as a wide receiver. Elway looks to this side, throw Shannon Sharp. I beg your pardon, make that. Yes, it is Shannon Sharp. Now they went to five wides and while the Denver Broncos did, you could see what happened. You put Shannon Sharp out, way to the right like a wide receiver and you get a linebacker singled up on him and Derek Rogers that's that's tough duty for him to go out and have to cover Shannon Sharp all over the field. The ball just short of a first down will be third and one. Let's see if we can see John Elway hands look steel. Not moving should be a run. Not, Ooh, did not first get it. down, but short. It, you know, usually when you run the quarterback sneak, these officials will give you the benefit of the doubt. And that time, John Elway went in the line of scrimmage and he went backwards. There was there was nowhere to go. Well, the fans want Mike Shanahan to go for it on fourth down. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. He, Mike Shanahan's over on the sideline. He is tearing up that script he's got, looking for that play. 
So you can tell just by his reaction there that he plans on going for it on fourth down. That's almost a full yard, yard short. Hey. On fourth down, number 89, Dwayne Carswell, an extra tight end, comes into the game. Now, he, is, he has been four for ten so far this year, the Denver Broncos are in fourth down. But Mike Shanahan has been a risk taker in these situations. But I've got to, well, he's going to five wide receivers. I would think he would hand it to Terrell Davis. Look for the quarterback draw. No way, quick draw. Quick draw got his man, Rod Smith. Down the sidelines, out of bounds, inside the 25 yard line. Well, usually, a lot of times, when he always under center, that's a quarterback sneak. I thought maybe the quarterback draw, but they go to the play that they run so many times. Rod Smith, look at him coming across in motion, and what they do, Elway sprints out, and they just throw it to the sideline real fast before the defense can react. So the Broncos now set up at the Miami 22. You know, I, as I watch this so far, the Miami Dolphins defensive line, when you lose Tim Bowens and you lose Jason Taylor, two really quality defensive linemen, it is tough to stop the running game. And Terrell Davis, 12 carries for 109 yards. They go with those two touchdowns. And most consecutive 100 yards rushing game in the playoffs. Terrell Davis now moves one closer to John Riggins. Second and two from the 14, Davis. Moves the pile on the first down yardage. Well, when you're sitting there on the sideline for the Miami Dolphins and you are just getting gassed by the running game of the Denver Broncos, now look. Look what they've done. They're just going to put everybody in there and leave single coverage. They're going to get both safeties involved with the running game because they got to find a way to stop Terrell Davis. Broncos had just 219 total yards in the loss to Miami. And you see Jimmy Johnson fired up. Yeah, that's why the, the fans are reacting. Jimmy can get a little animated on the sidelines. First down from the 10. Elway, end zone, incomplete. Rod Smith is intended receiver. Now, you, you know, it's hard to sit here and say, boy, you're impressed with something so far in the Miami defense because the Broncos have just driven it down the field every time. But the corners, the coverage has been exceptional by the corners down the field. And John Elway, he knows that the going's pretty tough when you throw to those wide receivers. Derek Lavelle, the lone back behind Elway now on second down. And Lavelle gets the toss, cuts it back. Inside the 10, inside the 5, touchdown. What is happening in this Miami Dolphin defense? It likes to run. It is fast. The cutback runs. They're over pursuing. And when the runners stop and go the other way, there is nobody on the backside there to make the tackle. Third rushing touchdown of the day for the Broncos. Elam's kick is good. 439 to play in the first half as the Broncos extend to 21 to 3. And Jimmy Johnson's going to take a walk and do a little talking. Derek Lavelle picking his way into the end zone. 21-3 Broncos. Once again, these aerial shots provided by Southwest Airlines. 439 to play here in the first half. And the Broncos with a 21-3 lead and an unhappy Jimmy Johnson on the sideline. This is short kick, Avery from the five. 
Dips outside on the far side, 25, and out of bounds, short of the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown, Phil. Well, let's take a look at it from the defensive side. Here you come. Watch Derek, Le Derek LaBelle just takes it to the right. And watch as he cuts back the safeties for the Dolphins. Brock Marion misses the tackle that time. But watch Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker. His job, seek and destroy. He's in good position, but again, gets a little too far outside. You've got to watch the cutback. That's the main thing, the Denver Broncos offense, what they like to do when they're running the football. That'll tell you a lot about what the Broncos have accomplished today. Marino from his own 28. Stumbling across the 30 to about the 32. Tyrone Braxton making the tackle on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know, the, the Miami Dolphin offense, you know, they have success throwing the football, and they did that one drive. They go down and kick the field goal, but, you know, you're kind of caught in between. What do we do? Try to hurry up and get this thing and score? Or do you slow it down? Because you got to think something of your defense. You, If you go three and out, you put your defense back out in the field again, this game could be over. Over the middle, in, no, it's complete, caught by Lamar Thomas. And Thomas has enough for a first down. You know, I don't know how many times as I've watched Dan Marino through the years, as you get a look at Lamar Thomas, but I always keep looking at him and go, well, I think he's losing it a little, I don't know. And But I tell you, as I've watched him these last five or six weeks, the Dolphins have started to throw the ball. He looks good, his feet look lively. He's moving in the pocket. And his arm looks as strong as, it, as I've ever seen it. You can see him bouncing on the balls and his feet back there. Marino throws incomplete. Pass intended for Ed Perry. No pass interference. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. So we were talking to John Elway out here. Watch this. Damn, it's a blitz. Steve Atwater coming free. Dan Marino sees it. John Mobley does a good job getting his hand up and knocking the pass down. But we were talking to John Elway. He said he loved throwing the football down in Miami. It felt good, the humidity, all that. And he says, out here, it's real dry. And he says, Dan Marino, I can't wait to see how many times he licks that big hand trying to get some moisture on it to throw the football out here in Denver. Second and 10. Getting nowhere, Stanley Pritchett. Well, they're getting no pressure on Dan Marino in the passing game. So the Denver Broncos, watch John Mobley, second and 10. They're going to take a chance, try to get to the quarterback, but if they run the ball, just get in the way and make the tackle. Third and call it 13. Close to the 45-yard line to Gadsden. Good job by the Denver Broncos defense. They blitz. You make it, they make you throw it quick, short of the first down. That'll take us up to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in the first half, and the Broncos lead it 21 to 3. Highlights plus Steelers coach Bill Cower. We'll have first half analysis plus a preview of the San Francisco Atlanta game. That's coming up on the NASDAQ Amex halftime report. And if you're sitting at home and you're wondering why is Phil Sims reading that, well, Greg Gumbel's back. How you doing, Greg? Hey, Phil. All right. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to play hurt, Greg. <laughs> Two minutes to play on fourth down. Darian Gordon. Fair catch. At the seven. Well, you look at the Broncos, their first three possessions in 14 plays, four plays for a touchdown, then 11 plays. I mean, everything they are trying in the running game is working. Now, the passing game, when John Elway 
has thrown the ball down the field to his receivers against the Miami Dolphins defensive backs, the corners especially, not quite as easy. Elway's numbers, 9 of 12 for 113 yards. And he has a minute 51 here in the first half. Davis hit hard for a loss of about a yard. Well, when you look at Terrell Davis, all the success he is having, here's what you got to do to stop him. The safeties, you got to get nine people involved coming up on the outside of the formations to take away the run when it comes to the strong side. And then when you come back to the back side, you can see number 31, Brock Marion, the other safety. There he is. What has happened so far in this game, the safeties, when they have come up, They've over-pursued, or they've missed the tackle. And a completely different game on the ground as opposed to the first, when they met the, back in Miami on the 21st of December. Davis. But the, really, the big key so far is, I mean, we talk about this running game, the Denver offensive line is just winning the battle up front. I said to you earlier that Mike Shanahan, he said, when we played down in Miami, they just whipped us up front. So you don't think he used that at all this week to his offensive lineman? Like, you know, can we make this 50-50? Let's win this battle. So we split the year. But the offensive line has done a terrific job. 135 rushing yards for the Broncos. And you know, you you know how good they were doing and how good this offensive line. We talked to Zach Thomas, and he had the utmost respect for him, especially the center, number 66, Tom Nalen. He says he does a terrific job of run block blocking and pass blocking. Well, the Broncos burn their second time out of the half. There's Tom Nalen. Let's take a look at the numbers on these two great quarterbacks, Elway and Marino, today. I mean, Marino, 10 of 14 for 106 yards. Not much to differ there. Well, the difference is Terrell Davis. Well, it is, and both of them throw the football extremely well when they get open receivers, and uh, John Elway's done a good job of throwing it by having receivers move, getting them open, getting good matchups, which is something the Broncos always try to do. And that is 14 rushes for 111 yards for a running back. I mean, well, I don't know if outstanding is a good word for it. Outstanding is a pretty good word. 25 seconds remaining. Third and four for Elway. Davis coming at you again. Tucks it back to 20, 25-yard line, and that's a first down. But in all likelihood, that'll be the last play of the first half. Just another good example, cutting back the backside of the defense, not doing the job for the Miami Dolphins. The Broncos will let the clock run out. And that is the end of the first half. Our halftime score, Denver 21, Miami 3. Coming up, we'll be sending you to New York in the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. Jim Nance and company will get you caught up on the highlights and all the NFL playoffs news after these messages. From your Stutter local. four times. It was pretty good. The whole booth was giving me high fives, and I did it. They had practice. no faith in me. No faith. Mari booms this one. This might be run out of the end zone. Hebron. We'll keep it there. Let's check in with Armin Kotei and Armin. You know, as expected, Greg, you imagine Jimmy Johnson not pleased. I talked to him. He said, we're not playing well at all. They're playing like Super Bowl champions. We have to do something to slow them down in the second half. Mike Shanahan, very pleased. That opening drive, 92 yards. He said, we really set the tempo of this game. We have to keep it up. Those looking for omens might look at these two stats. The Dolphins are 0-6 in the playoffs, dating back to 1972, not including the Super Bowl. The Broncos, on the other hand, are 17-0 at home. Back to you. And John Elway goes back to work. Davis picking up right where he left off. Inside the 20 yard line. Wow. The offensive line for the Denver Broncos, they just come out. And they just open up a hole as big as you've seen in the whole first half. Watch Terrell Davis. A little counter play. Catches the Dolphins off guard. They're coming up field. Nobody there in the hole to make the tackle. And Terrell Davis 
You can see when you watch him run it when you're at home. He looks fresh. He looks quick and he is definitely faster than he was the last part of the football season. 62 yards. Derek Lavelle with the carry. You know, you know, Craig, we were talking to Terrell Davis and we said to him, what did you do during the week off? And he says, man, did I rest up? And we talked about it a little before. He says, I didn't practice. I just worked out a little. And he says, I did some serious sleeping. He said, it was work. I did so much sleep. And I go, well, you know, I'm like, well, how much sleep did you get? And, you know, he was knocking out about 14 hours a day for a couple days. And you're a running back. You run for over 2,000 yards. You take all those hits. You need some rest. You put in a season. Five wide receivers for the Broncos. Elway coming across Shannon Sharp. John Elway, that time, that is one of the few times that he did not make a good decision. He completes the ball to Shannon Sharp. I saw him do this quite a bit in practice. They spread everybody out. Shannon Sharp just comes across the field and catches a short pass. But that time, Ed McCaffrey in the slot was one-on-one -on -one with Brock Marion, and nobody back behind him, and he was wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. Davis back in on third and one. for the first down and as you can tell by the CBS first down marker he didn't get there what almost looks funny to see Terrell Davis run up in there and not get about eight or ten and I mean the Miami Dolphins and it really kind of shows you I mean they got good depth on their defensive line but they have really been hurt up front by not having Tim Bowens and Jason Taylor that short of a first down. And on fourth and about half a yard, Elway on the field. Well, John, I mean, Mike Shanahan's already made his mind up, and it looks like John Elway already has the play. Okay, thank you, sir. I mean, you'd have to think, if you're the Denver Broncos, as good as they've run the football, you wouldn't take a chance in this situation by trying to catch the defense by surprise. Just hand it to Terrell Davis and let him bang in there and get you a first down. Broncos have gone for it already once today on fourth down. They made it. John Elway sure did a lot of talking and stayed in the huddle quite a long time. take the delay of game penalty. The Dolphin defense did not jump on the cadence. Well, you know, that's about, and I can understand, you know, the, the Miami defense, I'm sure they were somewhat alerted, don't jump off sides, but John Elway has used that snap count about four times today and really hit it hard, and I think he's the best in the National Football League of drawing the defense off sides, but Miami's defense has not moved. Jason Elam will try this one from 32 yards. You will recall he had a 63-yarder earlier this season. And it is good. The Elam field goal caps off the drive set up by Terrell Davis going 62 yards. The Broncos extend their lead. This is Avery. Looking for running room near side. Penalty marker flies, and Avery is down just across the 25-yard line. 